The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good Thursday morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien, coming to you live from TFNN. Quite a market day as we anticipate the opening bell in about 24 minutes. Blowout earnings from NVIDIA. We got everything trading higher this morning, except for a few equities with their numbers last night. Rivian, one of those. Great car company. Boy, the stock, a different story. Nonetheless, we kick it off with the S&Ps. We're up by 1.35%, folks. All of that right now on the heels of those NVIDIA numbers. We'll jump into them in a moment. We're going to jump around to the indices first. S&Ps up by 67 points, 1.35 percent in the green. NASDAQ 100 is over 2 percent right now, folks. We're going to kick off the trading session up by 353 points. That's a 2 percent acceleration. Keep your eye on the fact, though, that we're not even where we were less than a week ago, which was 18,000 in the NASDAQ 100. It was quite a little pullback into those earnings. But boy, the bar was pretty high. NVIDIA came out with the numbers after the bell right away. They beat, they beat on the forecast. You pulled back a bit. I was in the den. Everybody was anticipating those numbers, man. They come out right at 4.20 p.m. Eastern time last night. I said, is this, you know, the bar was just too high? Maybe, maybe the bar was just too high. They beat on earnings. They beat on the forecast. And then the market digested those numbers and said, no, we're going higher. They came out with some, uh, some, some more quotes in particular from the CEO. Pretty strong in terms of indic um, indicating where this market is going this year and next as he expects demand to continue surging. The Dow inching towards 39,000, 38,908, the Dow up by six tenths percent, and the Russell is flat. Check that one out, right? If you're a believer in AI powering this market forward, the Russell's not where you wanna be. NASDAQ 100 up 2%, Russell barely flat this morning, and uh, you were in the positive, but check it out. The Russell, since about 4 a.m. Eastern time, given up almost a full percent, down about 20 points from that high we made earlier this morning. Bitcoin, trading up $160, 51,115, little volatility there. You jump over to crude. Crude trading up, excuse me, down 54 pennies. We were just at that $78 range, and that's kind of the area, right? We go to a daily real quick on crude. You can see, even from where we backed off, just kind of the upper boundary range from 78 to 79. We're rolling over a little bit. Crude just continues to chop around in the high 70s. You jump over to gold. Gold digesting the numbers on last night, up to 2045. We're down to 2034. Gold technically flat on the session. And you jump to notes and bonds. Now, we got a little bit of jobs data this morning as well that we will get into. But that is secondary in terms of what's going on in this market and what's going on in growth stocks. The 10-year right now, negative by five ticks. We're talking about a 10-year yield of 4.33%. 4.33%, the yield on the 10-year. As we jump around, and let's go over to the VIX. As this market goes straight up, we got the VIX sucking out all that volatility of NVIDIA earnings, man. We're at a 14.24. We were at a 16 VIX yesterday. You jump over to the dollar index as we finish the wrap-up. Dollar trading higher as we got a little bit of higher yield coming at you. We're above 4.3 on the 10-year. The dollar going from 4.3, excuse me, 103.43. We're back above 104, right where you were as of the close of the session yesterday in the dollar. All right, it's 9, 10 in the morning. We got 20 minutes to go to the second until the opening bell, and it's going to be a wild one, man. Where is supply going to equal demand on this open? You got NVIDIA shares. Now, it's pretty simple math. They got about 2.5 billion shares outstanding. I think it's 2.47. I was just looking at where we come in. Yeah, 2.47 billion. Nice round number. It's not often that round. With buybacks and stuff like that, usually those numbers, um, 2.47. So we call it 2.5 billion shares. You're going to open up $75 about. Yeah, right now you're trading at $750. You're going to open up $75. So what's that going to add? $2.5 billion. Man, that's going to be quite a number, man. $75? Yeah, $75, $150. What are you looking at? $180, almost $200 billion in market cap you're going to add overnight. And that is probably going to eclipse the record that Meta just set in terms of the run. Now, what should happen, right, is that we should continue to set these records because inflation 
just the, the raw power of the numbers that you're dealing with, right? You're dealing with bigger numbers. You should constantly be setting records in terms of the move that you've had in one day as these companies get bigger and bigger and bigger and the moves that they have on a daily basis are gonna be larger and larger, but it is kind of ridiculous that NVIDIA is gonna take that throne right out of Meta's hands and they just set that number. I mean, you jump over to Meta now. So NVIDIA up by $75. Now what's interesting is you jump over to the Analyze tab, all right, we've been talking about it, and they'd had about a $60 move priced in. Okay, so $60 move implied, you're up right now about 75, so just over the implied move. I mean, yes, you gotta move to the upside, so you had to be directionally correct. Now, we've been talking about on this chart, 800 is probably where this thing's gonna climb to, man. Especially after those numbers, you're talking about an A to B, C to D, and remember how this thing plowed ahead of that B point, right? I mean, you, I didn't think it was gonna go from 500 to 800 when you crossed the B point on January 8th, and it's February 22nd right now. But nonetheless, that's where we find ourselves. And you look at where we were pre-market, you were all the way up to 775, 800 is that price point. So NVIDIA, they're gonna have, get quite a boost on the open. Doesn't matter where you look right now, especially into the growth stocks. Amazon shares, you're up what, almost $4? What is that, 2.5% to the upside for Amazon shares? You jump over to Google. Google shares up about three bucks. That's gonna be a 2% list. You jump over to Microsoft. They're big into AI, $7 to the positive, almost a 2% lift on Apple, on Microsoft, excuse me, Apple shares. Not quite to the same degree, right? Apple, uh, more going on than just AI, up less than a dollar. It's remarkable, Apple continues to underperform. Keep your eye on that one, man, because Apple continuing to underperform. You got Buffett dumping some of his shares in the last quarter. I imagine he may seize, I mean, you know, for some context here, folks, Apple's where you were trading at at the end of 2021. End of 2021, okay? You pull up Microsoft. Microsoft is a solid, what, 15% above that price level right now? Easy. Let's see where Google is. They're a different animal. Yeah, Google right back to where you were in 2021 as well. Uh, for some context, though, NVIDIA at the end of 2021, was trading at 335. We'll cherry pick the high, so you're going to be more than 100% up off that number. Pretty remarkable. All right, let's take a look at these numbers, man. NVIDIA set for the biggest gain in nine months. Biggest gain ever is what they should say, man, in terms of what they're going to gain. The numbers there, the biggest one probably is that you're talking about forecast for the current period. Okay, current period revenue, $24 billion. Market was looking for under 22. Huge beat especially in the context of expectations already sky high. Yeah, they're gonna add 200 to $250 billion in terms of the market cap, gonna be the biggest pop ever. And yeah, some of his quotes were pretty strong. This is talking about the CEO. Generative EI has kicked off a whole new investment cycle. Where are they investing in? They're investing in his chips. Uh, it's gonna double the world's data center installed base over the next five years. Sam Altman's trying to increase that rate, right? It's raising $7 trillion from the Saudis, et cetera. And it represents an annual market opportunity in the hundreds of billions of dollars. Remarkable, man. Now you're gonna have some competitors, okay? Uh, how about the data center? Yeah, spending on AI-related infrastructure, data center revenue. Fiscal year, 47.5. I mean, the growth on this chart, man. We got a lot to talk about, folks. We're coming back. We'll talk to our man, Kevin Hicks, from Fast Market, from the Schwad Network. Don't go away, folks. It's going to be an interesting program. We're just getting started. We'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years 
Trader's experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. Welcome back, folks. We've got NVIDIA shares right now trading up $75 at $747. Bucks. Let's continue taking a look at some of NVIDIA, man, because it's going to all be about NVIDIA on the open. Pretty remarkable. NASDAQ 100 popping 2%. You know, quite a remarkable pullback in the last couple of days. You get it all back on those earnings, but nonetheless. Uh, now, let's jump around here. So, this article here is talking about that NVIDIA profits are rising more than its stock. And it is interesting to see. And this is how some of those P.E. ratios, if they ever make sense, folks, when they get to the fantastical level that some of the P.E. ratios on NVIDIA have gotten to right now and in the past, is that you got to crush the earnings going forward, right? I mean, that's why you have P.E. estimates, even based on future earnings that are just through the moon sometimes, is because these companies are going to grow their earnings at a rate that is going to dwarf what you're looking at in that regard. Now, here's what we talk about, okay? How about a 486% year-over-year growth in earnings per share? How about that, man, since the middle of 2023? Folks, it's only February 2024, okay? Massive earnings growth, almost a 500%, okay? They just came in at $5.16, Per share, the market was looking for 460. They're forecasting 24 billion in the next quarter, as we talked about. The market was looking for 21.9, somewhere in that regard. Yes, and this is the chart I wanted to look at here. Okay, this goes back to the middle, uh, almost the beginning of 2023, it looks like. Okay, in red, you have Nvidia's stock price which with the axes on the left, okay? And in the black, you have the P-E ratio, okay? And look at what's happened. You've had the P-E ratio, which is in black, was at one point peaking at 65 to 70, okay? And all it's done is come down as the stock market has accelerated higher, and you're talking about a price-to-earnings ratio um, that is well below some of the loftier levels that it was at, especially towards the beginning of 2023. Not a lot of people would be aware of that chart when you take a look at it, man, versus the run up in the equity that it's had as the price has continued to accelerate. The price per those earnings has actually decreased as the earnings have just grown 500% almost on that number. Let's see. 
We had that one. Yeah, there's the number there. Now you're looking at, NVIDIA is going to be right at the number, right? They've pulled back a bit. So to take the title away from Meta that they gained just 20 days ago, I mentioned, what do they got? They got 2.5 billion shares outstanding. They need about a $200 billion Uh, the stock's got to be up about $80 to get the record, and you're up like $75 right now. So you're going to be right at the top of this chart, man. Pretty remarkable, the run that it's had. Now, Meta is not quite the the size of the company that NVIDIA is. But, yeah, you're going to have NVIDIA shares soaring past the likes of Amazon and Google today. Now, the one thing that I find myself trying to anticipate, at least, is the competition that you are going to have coming down the board. And they reference it slightly in one of these articles. Uh, the stock traded about 30 times forward earnings as of Wednesday's close. You got AMD at 43 times, just finishing up where we are. The whole NASDAQ 100 trades at 25 times multiples, and you got NVIDIA at only 30 times multiples. That's one way to put things, okay? Uh, is this the one they talk about? I want to get the one they talk about for competition. Yeah. All right, I'll have to find it when we come back after the break. We got three different articles we're talking about here. Yeah, that's the blowout. Maybe this was it. They're going to have competition coming from them. Yeah, here it was. They make a note to it. Uh, NVIDIA faces risks, including mounting competition. Folks, they're taking in $24 billion in revenue uh, over a 90-day period, and almost 50% of that is going to their earnings. If you don't think people are coming for that market, they are coming for that market. They got quite a head start, though. They're going to be the leader. Uh, and as they said, so you got AMD recently began selling a line of accelerators called the MI300. They're looking for $3.5 billion from the product this year, up from an earlier projection of $2 billion. We just talked about, though, they're trading at a PE of 43 versus NVIDIA at 30. And then, of course, NVIDIA, if they're in the lead, they're going to keep going, though. Uh, analysts expect the company to soon unveil more powerful accelerators. They have to navigate China. That's going to be a problem for them, man, in terms of China. Okay, in terms of data center revenue, China accounted for a mid-single-digit percentage in the fourth quarter. We expect it to stay in a similar range in the first quarter. Um, yeah, and they got new chips that are compliant to Chinese customers. Keep in mind, though, they're selling second-grade chips to China, and China is definitely going to be working immediately on making sure that they get the top chips and not just the second-grade chips that fall under the restraints of the U.S. government. There we go. That's the last part I want to get to here, okay? Companies such as Amazon, Meta, Microsoft, and Alphabet's Google are NVIDIA's largest customers, accounting for nearly 40% of its revenue. 40%. That's not going away, folks. That's the most remarkable part. Now, you're going to have these companies looking at the possibility of spending less and getting into that business themselves. But if it were easy, everybody who's doing it would be doing it. And that's not what's happening right now as these stocks and NVIDIA. Everybody wants NVIDIA chips. They're top of the line, and their next chips are probably going to be top of the line. And this is a once-in-a-generation, once-in-a-multiple-generation opportunity because once you get the lead in AI – how does somebody ever supplant, um, you know, take over that title if you've reached that status? And it's interesting how this almost becomes a Department of Defense type issue as well, because we're at the forefront of technologies so that are going to overtake the globe. So that money is just never going to stop when you put in that in that regard. Interesting when you look at it in that angle. Yeah. Now, they only forecast quarter by quarter usually. They're not talking about multiple years of revenue. I mean, there's so much volatility, right? How do you look forward a year when you can barely look forward sometimes 90 to 180 days in terms of where this industry is going and what type of orders you're dealing with? But the fact that he talked about in terms of this trend carrying through 2024, carrying through even possibly the next couple of years, some of the words that were used, um, it's a strong indication that this is not going anywhere. All right. What else we got going on? So we talked about, as we come into this break, NVIDIA is going to trade higher. Boy, Rivian, right? 
joking with some friends last night. Uh, the slide continues. Yeah, watch out for this stock. We'll talk a little bit about it when we come back after the break. You got Rivian shares down $3, which is a 20% acceleration, folks. You put this thing back on the daily. Where are we going to open? We're opening it like the lows of last year, 12 bucks. You were just up to $28 in July, folks. My goodness, right? You might break all-time lows on this equity after they pushed it out to the public and ran it up to $179. I know. Right. And 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 yes, 179 is a cherry picked high. But this thing went public November of 2021. Kudos to them for pushing it out right as the market was peaking out at highs. And you lasted for two solid months above 100, two solid months above 100. This thing traded at. Well, yeah, we're going to open at 12 bucks. Stay tuned, folks. We're coming back for the open. S&P's up by 65. Nasdaq 100 up by 341. We'll be right back. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk. So why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey. Because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30 plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com tfnn educating investors are you ready to take your trading to the next level? Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We got the stock market open. You got NVIDIA shares up by 10.95%. We're trading at $745. That's a lift of about $70. As I mentioned, dealing with about 2.5 billion shares outstanding for NVIDIA. If they want to hit that, excuse me, 200, what did I say, 200? Yeah, 200 billion is what they need to market out cap to be the most ever. Uh, just an arbitrary number, but nonetheless, you'd have to be up by about $80, but you jump over to the Analyze tab, man. You're talking about a company, folks, this morning 
that's valued at $1.85 trillion. $1.85 trillion. Absolutely remarkable. You jump over to Google, they're at 1.8 right now. Everyone's getting a lift, obviously. You jump over to Amazon shares, 1.8 as well. So NVIDIA, a larger company than Amazon and Google at this point. Pretty remarkable. You got Amazon shares with everything in this market, catching a lift by 2.4% right now. We jump around to some of the big dogs. Microsoft up by 1.8% right now. Companies like Salesforce accelerating higher, up by 3% right now. Google shares up by 8%. They actually gave it back on the open there. You jump over to Apple, up by about 9 tenths percent right now. And I referenced Rivian, and it's not stopping. Probably justifiably so. You're down 25% for this equity. You closed it out yesterday above 15. Right now, we're trading at 11.61. And the deal with Rivian is, is that they're in trouble, period. Uh, Rivian has about 1 billion shares outstanding. That's easy for simple math to give you the exact number. They're looking at about 957 million shares. Okay, the company clocks in at a market cap of $11.2 billion currently. Folks, if somebody ever comes to you with an idea of a company and they've incorporated this company and they tell you that they have master plans, they tell you that they got a deal going on and Jeff Bezos is a participant and they say, we're going to push paper out to the public. We're going to do it at about 100 to $120 billion market cap and we haven't even sold a product yet. If people will buy it. Kudos to you, man. And that's what happened, which is absolutely remarkable. You got a billion shares for this company, okay? So it's simple math. When I said that you were trading above 100 for a solid eight weeks when this thing went public from November until where we were when the market really fell apart in January, this company had a market capitalization of 100 plus billion dollars back then. I'm ballparking. I'm sure the outstanding shares maybe changed since then, uh, went up or down. But nonetheless, it was 80 to 100 billion. If you take that cherry picked high, my goodness, you were dealing with a market cap that was well through the, what is that? Nine figures, nine figure, right? Uh, nonetheless, this morning we're at $11 billion, okay? And look at these numbers. It's just crazy when you think about how this company was valued and then you look where they are. This is their EV production, okay? And a big problem here is that they are well below everything. They're laying off people. They're going to build 57,000 vehicles this year, basically right in line with where they were last year. Folks, a pre-revenue company for $100 billion doesn't just start producing 50,000 vehicles and do it this year and do it next year. The market was looking for 80,000. On a percentage basis, you have a 0% growth versus what? 23, almost a 40% growth priced in? Yeah, they're going to cut their salaried workforce by 10%. Again, this the size of this company right now, they need to be ramping things up. They're not the type of company that should probably be scaling things back with the market capitalization that they have. Excuse me. Now, you go take a look at what this looks like on a chart. When this company went public, how many cars did they produce? 1,000 that year. And I think they were pretty much towards the end of the year. 2022, they made 24,000. 2023, they made 57,000. They said, guess what? We're just going to make 57,000 again this year. And the market said, that is a problem. Yeah. Um, EVs are a problem, man. You know, these are beautiful cars too, man. When I see these cars, I've a couple times just literally found myself, you know, just kind of going around, taking a look at it. Uh, yeah, Rivian lost $40,000 on every vehicle delivered in the last three months, 10,000 more than it lost in the third quarter. Everything's going in the wrong direction. I actually found myself on these numbers last night saying, and I didn't plan on buying a Rivian just yet, they're expensive vehicles, man. You can, you can, that's the other problem here is that, you know, you're going to spend $100,000 on an SUV. You can pretty much get anything you want top of the line, but they are beautiful cars, man. But I found myself saying, hold on a second. The last thing you want to do, folks, is buy a vehicle from a company that's not going to be around. What was it? Daewoo, right? Was that the company that just stopped existing? People had the car. And before you know it, four or five years later, the company didn't exist. You can't get parts, et cetera. You know, somebody probably buys them if, if they go kaput, worst case scenario. But I found myself thinking that last night, which I have not thought. Um, there's no way that they should be not growing the amount of cars they're producing. Absolutely no way. They're losing more per vehicle than they were losing last year. 
Capital expenditure going to rise 1.75 billion. Somewhere in here, they lost like 2.5 billion dollars. The number, yeah, here you go. Uh, still expecting an adjusted loss of 2.7 billion dollars before interest, taxes, depreciation, and amortization. They're going to lose that before you factor in all the real life stuff that that, that matters when running a company. Um, yeah, be careful on Rivian shares, folks. Great car, but boy, that is quite. A lesson when you think about the price destruction from that level. Absolutely remarkable. All right, let's see how Nvidia's trading. Six minutes into the trading day. There you go. You catch a pop on the open. Yeah, can't fault somebody for selling ahead of that that number because there's volatility, man. That's what's so great about options, folks. You know, we didn't talk to our man Kevin Hicks this morning. He's busy. He couldn't make it. But we will talk to him uh, on Tuesday. But check out Fast Market. Because even if you don't trade options, folks, we air it live every day, 12 noon Eastern time, right here from the Schwab Network, okay? Even if you don't trade options, understanding the implied moves in equities is just so advantageous when you're trading equities and options will give you so much of that information, even if you're not trading the options that underlie them themselves. Nonetheless, you got NVIDIA up 85 bucks. You're trading right now up 12.6%, quite a lift. You jump over to Microsoft shares, up by 1.7%, 409. Amazon up by 2.5. Google, one of the other big, ooh, look at Google, man. Pay attention to how these stocks react on days like today, folks, right? Google's only up three tenths percent. Everything else is plying on higher. So pay attention. If you're really looking for AI to carry things, pay attention to those types of moves on days like today where Google can't find a bid and everything else is dramatically higher. They obviously all have different facets of the business, but that's indicative of buying and selling right there. All right, what else do we got going on? Oh, AT&T's got some issues this morning, man. AT&T grapples with wireless service disruption across the US. I was watching Bloomberg this morning prior to the program. And um, Jonathan Farrow was laughing at them, justifiably so, man. Uh, yeah, here's the quote. Some of the customers are experiencing wireless service interruptions this morning. This is the quote from AT&T. We are working urgently to restore service to them. We encourage the use of Wi-Fi calling until service is restored. <laughs> like, that's, that's, that's your game plan? Uh, going to be interesting to see how a network like that experiences nationwide problems started at about 3 30 in the morning seems like it's still carrying through and you jump over to at&t and they are down by 2.5 percent on that news to 16.57 uh yeah interesting as we rely on those networks so much everything does right how does that look like go forward going forward as interruptions going to interrupt more than just our cell phone service stay tuned folks we still got a lot to talk about we'll be right back are you ready to take charge of your financial future TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. 
the Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. We have the S&Ps holding on to most of those gains. We're up by 61 points right now. NASDAQ 100 up almost 2% at 363 points in the positive. You get the Dow right now at about 38,900. And you jump over to the Nikkei. So you got the Nikkei. Well, if you held for 35 years, then kudos to you, man, because you got another all-time high. Pretty remarkable, man. There's your high in December of 1989. And here is your new high in February of 2024. Always make sure you're diversified, folks. Okay, as much as you love this tech rally, okay, if you're depending on that wealth for anything, especially near retirement, always make sure you're diversified. I hope we all learned that during the pandemic. We had tremendous winners and losers. Always make sure you're diversified. Uh, don't think that something like this could never happen in America. I don't think it will, okay? But, and you're, you're entitled to think that, but make sure you protect yourself and you make sure you protect yourself to some of the tail risks that are out there, if you can, okay? If you have the ability to protect yourself, depending on how much you have at risk, you just see links like this, okay? Nobody thought, now this was bubblicious back in 1990, okay? But if you told somebody, man, if you, you know, you buy here, you're not gonna see that money again for 35 years, right? No, nobody would have thought that's happening. Things happen all the time that you think can't happen, okay? Uh, but nonetheless, you are higher, and uh, yeah, you got a lot of companies making a lot of money over there. It's not the bubble that it once was, and uh, yeah, and that produces the Nikkei's overall market capitalization of $4.6 trillion, the highest number out there, yeah. Now, you jump over to yen, okay? There's the yen, we're pushing 150.61, just kind of chopping around where we've been recently. It's gonna be interesting to where we go forward with the yen, the dollar as well, I mean, you don't have to be a technical trader to realize that we are pushing boundaries, that resistance is intact at about the 151 range. You're back up to where you were in November. You jump over to the dollar index, which is gonna be slightly an inverse of that, obviously factoring in the euro and other currencies as well. But you get the dollar right now rising, I mean, on a weekly, you know, to 104 and change. We were just below though, pretty remarkable move we just got, man, to 104.34, we're back at 104.10. As the dollar surges higher, you jump over to yields. Not quite the same move in terms of producing that type of a reaction. We do have a little bit of higher yield this morning, but not quite the move you might expect when you see that type of move in the dollar index. We have 4.33 is what we're looking at right now. Now, some of the numbers we got out this morning on top of NVIDIA, okay, you got jobless claims out here, barely 200,000, 201,000. Initial claims decreasing by 12,000 to 201,000. Continuing claims dropping to 1.86 million. Continuing claims, always one week more delayed. 
than initial claims. Initial claims, we're looking at the numbers for last Friday. Okay, the week ended February 17th, Saturday technically. And for continuing claims, they go back one more week for 1.86 million. Nonetheless, what makes you think that we need a cut, right? Everything is running a little hot. Now, some of the takes in here are that things are a little bit deceiving if you're looking at some of that data, okay? Um, you know, this is one take, okay? Drilling down to the state level data, there's a breadth of labor market weakness has increased, implying that conditions might not be uh, just quite say, um, are less sanguine than they appear on the service on the surface potentially. You got Morgan Stanley, you got Rivian talking about layoffs right there. Rising number of layoffs at big corporations may signal jobless claims could rise in coming months. Although so far the figures have remained low, you can't deny the data, man. You know, if we were not so low for so long, okay. And what would make you think that we somehow, look at this pop we're getting right now, man. Look at this pop we just got. Did we just get something? Because the 10 here just jumped, what, six, seven basis points as I was talking about it? That's the 9.45 a.m. bar. Yeah, not sure if we just got something out there, man. But we got the yields dropping a bit. Um, and we got movement everywhere. As we get the NASDAQ 100 continuing higher up by almost 400 right now. You jump over to NVIDIA shares, keeping our eye on them. <sighs> Look at that, man. So you are, you're adding, remember, 2.5 billion shares, man. The thing's up almost 100 bucks. You're adding $250 billion market cap overnight to that equity. Now, you're just back to where we were trading. What, what was our high recently? Was that it? Are we back to the highs? <laughs> we're well over the highs, man. What was the high? 746, that was the high. We're trading 771 so far this morning, up by $97, 14.4% to the upside for NVIDIA shares. Jump over to AMD. Of course, they're catching a lift. Demand surging, 7.6% to the upside for AMD shares. This market's not stopping, man. What makes you think we need a cut, right? Look at this market, man. Now, look at, this is, so 5122. We've been talking about these S&P, <coughs> excuse me, the, a to B, C to D projections. 51.22 is where you're at in the S&Ps. We'll see if we bump into any resistance. That's about 60 points above where we're trading at right now. Uh, not sure what these channel lines are meaning here, okay? We were in a channel at one point. You know, this is just trying to figure things out. We break out of maybe a more recent channel from January, but look what we're doing. Let's extend that to the right. Let's put this on a little bit of a shorter term time frame. Let's zoom in since we've been on that portion. And you can see this trend that we had here at one point, we're breaking back into that channel line right now. Remarkable strength in the markets, even as we face a 10 year at about 4.3%. And the case is very difficult to make that we need to cut rates as this market plows forward, right? I mean, think about it. The reason why you cut rates is you make capital cheaper. It's that simple. OK, now consumers, the housing market in particular. But think about the amount of capital that's being spent by these companies as we look at it across the board right now, where equities are across the board. I mean, you get the Dow inching 38,900 right now. We are a stone's throw away from 40,000 in the Dow. We're about to break all time highs in the Dow. NASDAQ 100, we're what? A stone's throw away, we'll call it, from all time highs. And the S&P is crushing all time highs today as we speak. Russell? You do catch a bid, but yeah, the Russell continuing to underperform. All right, what else we got out here to talk about this morning? We talked about Rivian. We talked about an NVIDIA, of course. Yeah, this one's an interesting one. How does this even happen, right? Um, it's unfortunate it always takes the aftermath to figure things out. A fake parts scandal pushes aviation giants to rethink safeguards. You're supposed to rethink the safeguards before bad things happen. They're just fortunate that somehow this got found out before bad things happened in terms of those parts that were just knockoffs. Um, they're going to form a new coalition. Uh, they aim to keep unauthorized components out of the planes. Nonetheless, pretty remarkable it takes that for that to happen. We jump over to Boeing shares this morning. <coughs> Excuse me. Up by 8 tenths percent with the market. 20304 for Boeing shares. But, yeah, they got some issues going forward, man, to put it lightly. This market, this market's got no issues. None. As we just go one way right now. Look at this pop we just got on the open, man. 945, 
We're up by 15 points in the last five minutes in the S&Ps. NASDAQ 100 is approaching 2.4% to the positive. Amazon's up by 2.8%. Google finally catches a little bit of a bid, up by 1.2% right now. Microsoft's not stopping, up by 2.6%. The market cap that's being added right now is hard to even comprehend. All right, folks, one more segment. We'll jump around and see what else we got going on in these markets. Don't go away. We'll be right back, folks. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter. A must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We got Google shares up by 1.2% right now. And yeah, the other story going on with Google, which is probably why it was underperforming, at least to start off the session with that sell-off, is the news that they're pausing Gemini, right? Are they just pausing the image generation tool, I think it is? Uh, yes, they're pausing the Gemini AI image generator after it created inaccurate historical pictures. This story having to do with race, that always gets things fired up on both sides, of course, uh, but not where you want to be. And man, we are the frontier of the wild wild west of ai um yeah and it looks like they're generating pictures of historical figures like the u.s founding fathers as people of color calling them inaccurate i mean quite the story man gonna be interesting to see how we go forward this this image now it's interesting i was just talking about the image generators okay the image generators are so cool man i was just using them for tommy the fourth right putting some of those images out there earlier in the week 
Uh, and I, I joked about how even the, the audience seems like it was full of Afghani refugee. They, this we're, we're, we're so at the forefront, folks. It's going to be interesting to see how companies tackle this stuff. Um, and you can see that Google's a little bit nervous um, being on the wrong side of that. They just released this at the beginning of February. They've now stopped that image generator. I mean, videos are coming right down the line. They're already almost here. They're just going to ramp up. And keep in mind that it is very difficult to understand and grasp exponential growth. And that's what we are in right now. Okay? It's very difficult to understand how fast things can move when they're moving exponentially because of how fast growth can occur when it's growing at an exponential rate. And that is what is happening right now to the likes of NVIDIA earnings growing almost 500% over the last year, right? Less than the last year. Uh, nonetheless, Google, they're taking it on the chin a little bit. I say that. They're still up by 1.2% right now, but actually underperforming the NASDAQ, which is up 2.1% even after they give back some of that gain this morning. And why not? we got to finish it off with NVIDIA, right? NVIDIA shares up by 92 bucks, 13.6% to the upside. Biggest market capitalization gain ever right now in the history of the markets. Needs to be up about $80 by the close to take that title from Meta. Meta up by 3.5%, man. It's going to be an interesting day, folks. Stay tuned. we got a man, Basil Chapman. He's coming up next with the Tiger Technicians Hour. Have a great day, folks. Look forward to seeing you tomorrow at 9 a.m. as well. Stay tuned for Basil. We'll be right back, folks. Have a great one.